Welcome back to News and Views. The golden question, what is success? If there was a secret formula, you'd bottle it and you would dead set make a squillion. Our guest tonight is Rasmus Ankerson, a man who has travelled the world trying to unlock the mystery of sporting success, uh, a former pro footballer from a small village in Denmark and author of The Gold Mine Effect, a book that tries to explain why, for example, these days the world's fastest men are all Jamaicans, why the world's best long distance runners are from a tiny village in Kenya and why South, South Korea, for example, are producing the vast majority of the world's best women golfers. Rasmus, thanks very much for coming. I know you're to be here. pretty busy on your travels. Let's start on the back of the Olympics. Um, the world has just been blown away by these fast Jamaicans. You okay. have travelled the world. You have seen how they eat, how they sleep, how they live. What is the secret to these guys being so fast? I think people tend to think that this is about some genetic advantage, but there's actually no scientific evidence to that. It's more about one specific athletic club that produce all these sprinters. It's run by um, a coach, Mr. Stephen Francis, who weighs 150 kilos, never sprinted himself, graduated in statistics at the, in US and founded this club. And he has a very interesting approach to identifying talent. And what is the approach? He actually thinks about identifying talent as a private equity bank, thinks about identifying potential companies. He doesn't necessarily look for what works, he looks for what's broken, and then he asks himself, can I fix it, uh, and do I have time to fix it? If we talk about identifying talent, that's a very special skill in itself, and, and, and one that's hard to master, and you've had experiences yourself in this field. In 2004, you set up the Scandinavia's first football club, and I think you had 16 or 17 of the young, best up-and-coming footballers came to your camp. One of them you let in because you needed to make up the numbers, and none of you guys thought this guy had any ability. Yet here he is today, and you can tell the story, elaborate, running around in the Serie A um, in hot pursuit by Man U and Liverpool and some other world greatest football clubs. Yeah, we had this guy, uh, Simon Kerr was his name, that we took in because we couldn't, we couldn't get anyone better. So eventually, three years later, we sold him for four million pounds to an Italian club when he was 18. And the interesting part of the story is that uh, when he was 15, we all wrote, all the coaches, we wrote on a piece of paper uh, the names of the fire players we think would be the best five years in the future. And five years later, in uh, 2010, we reviewed, we reviewed this, and not a single one of us had Simon Kerr among our five, and we only had 16 to choose from. Where'd you get it wrong? Uh, well, I have to ask myself every day ever since, what did I overlook? I used to say there are two types of talent. There are talent that shouts. Talent that shouts is Usain Bolt, who at the age of 15 ran faster than anybody else. And then you have a guy like Simon Kerr, who's more a talent that whispers. So his potential didn't manifest in current top performance. And that's the hard one. How do you spot that? And that's what Stephen, back to Stephen Francis in Jamaica, that's what he really excelled at doing. It's interesting what you say about races not having an advantage, because most people would think the exact opposite, that they'd look at Kenyans and they'd say, why does Kenya produce so many long distance runners? Why are they so good at it? I know you've spent some time there and you've unlocked a little bit of that. Yeah, I, and it's not one factor in Kenya that makes the difference. It's a lot of factors. You have an environment with 800 top athletes training together. I mean, when I went for a morning run, 30 minutes jog, I met three world record holders. That's, that's, that's how it is in E10 in Kenya. So imagine that kind of environment. I mean, if you win the Tuesday morning training session, you're probably the fastest middle distance runners on the planet. That competitive environment brings the best out in people. You talk about eight key fundamentals that, that lead to this sporting success. One of them, it's about mindset and not facilities. If we go back to uh, the Jamaicans and yeah. Kingston, yeah. their athletics club, it's pretty much non-existent, isn't it? Yeah, I came out there half past five in the morning and, and I looked around and the first thing I thought was, where is the running track? Because all I saw was a big grass field. So I told my taxi driver, please wait here for 10 minutes because you obviously drove me to the wrong address. And then I realized that 10 minutes later, I was exactly where I was supposed to be. So we think they train in luxury fancy facilities, these sprinters. They train on a diesel scorched grass track and in a gym with rusty weights. So I asked the big guy, Francis, again, I mean, why are you not building a proper running trap? You have the best athletes on the planet. 
And he says the biggest mistake you do in the US and Australia and Europe building performance environments is to big these, uh, build these big luxury fancy facilities. Because the performance environment should not be designed for comfort but for hard work. So yeah. what do we do here, Rasmus, in Australia? I mean, we, we're, we're not going to tear down our Australian Institute no. of Sport, but how do we get a little bit of mongrel in, into our athletes? I, the question is really, how do you create hunger in paradise, right? Uh, when you have a very comfortable lifestyle, where should that hunger come from? I think the point is not that you have to downgrade facilities. I think the point is more that success is about mindset. It's not about facilities. So when we try to motivate people, we shouldn't do it by giving them more and more comfort. We should do it by giving them the best opportunities to develop and to improve. And that sometimes involves some kind of sacrifice. It might be facilities, it might be something else. Rasmus, thanks a lot for coming in. Uh, you're in Australia for a little while. Uh, guys, if you get a chance, grab the book, The Gold Mine Effect. Uh, pretty handy and it tells you uh, all about uh, the stuff we've just been talking about, identifying great athletes. Thanks a lot for coming in. Pleasure. Good stuff. Thanks, Rasmus. All right, it's time for a, a short break here on News and Views. On the other side, we'll hear from a former teammate of Lance Armstrong.